best and he was cool that I would look good in. Which were Levi's baggy pants and a gap sweater. I also had the best backpack, which which had which was an, an Nike gray gray and white backpack, gray and black backpack, with a lot of zippers and a lot of bottle holding both right and left side. By wearing this clothes I was <clears throat> by wearing this clothes and having this backpack, I was sure that everybody would like me because I look cute. <laughs> I went to the Central Elementary School, Central Elementary School located in City House, San Diego. I first walked into the, the office to, to get my document and paper that they needed from me, with my dad translating English and Mary. An old lady with a gray and long hair wearing a gray, a gray short and a sandals walking, walking me to, the, to my new classroom, room number 40. When I, when I walked to, into my classroom, the students were sitting up, down on the ground, and a blonde, light skinned, brown, and pregnant teacher was sitting on the high chairs reading the classroom, a book. When I saw this, I was confused. I, I was confused and I started shaking. I had never seen the students sitting on the ground while the teacher reading, reading, read a book and the, the student listening to, to her. I noticed when I walked into the classroom, I felt weird and different because all I saw was a lot of Mexican and white students. I was the name. I saw, I saw the same type of skin color I would have seen in movies. I saw their hair was not like mine, like my hair. It was smooth and it was smooth and I saw the students with gray hair. I had never seen that in my life until that moment. One thing that frightened me the most was when I saw the student with the blonde with the blue eye the, the blue eye. Back when I was in Ethiopia, all I saw was brown, brown eye and black hair color students. I did not know blue eyes were real until I was I saw these two students, blue eyes, students with blue eyes. I thought that was, I thought she was from outer space. She was, I saw students better than I would usually see in Ethiopia. <laughs> I saw students, okay. and in Ethiopia every student was skinny and fit and could run and play as good. after school or as, um, after a few weeks passed by, I started getting used to going to school playing in the playground with a new classmate, even though I had no idea what they were saying to me. I still played with them after, after lunch. I got, I got used to going to school, but only for lunch and playing time. I loved eating, I loved eating sandwiches and drinking chocolate milk, and that was the only reason I wanted to go to school for. <laughs> when I was every day, in the, the teacher ordered us to take off our jacket and leave, leave it in the classroom because we were about to do an outside activity. I took off my jacket in front of the, my classmate. That was my first time taking off my jacket because I was never, because <clears throat> when I was in Ethiopia, we had a uniform and sweater was part of the school uniform. I felt really uncomfortable and I felt naked when my arms showed me. They saw me and they realized I was really skinny. <laughs> from that day on, from that day, the Somali kid who was taller than me named Abdi started questioning me. Have you ever ate food? Do your parents ever feed you food? <laughs> For me, this question was not hurtful because I was so kid. All I thought about was hanging at lunchtime and with my classmate every day. Abby was born here in San Diego. He speaks a lot better English than me, and he's been in school longer than me. So everyone liked him and played with him at lunch. Also, they treated him equally. When I when I say equally, I mean they were really they were really nice to him. But it's probably because he was really taller than most of them. Let's go. Every morning. Every morning we had to get to school a few minutes before the school started. And we, we, would, we would line up where we were supposed to. A few days after I took off my jacket for the first time, I got to the line before anyone in my classmate. I walked into the school and I saw and the other class of line had, line, had, to line, uh, had two to five students lined up. The only line that was empty was my classmate, my classmate line. Many of my classmates got to the line a few minutes later than me, including Abby, and the first thing he said to me was, "Hey, you need to eat more. Can your parents feed you? Can you, can your parents afford to feed you faster?" After he said this, this Mexican kid named Alex said, "Hey, stop saying that to him. He's from Africa. He can kill you or something. He has the power to destroy the world like September 11th. At that time, I had no idea what 9/11 meant." So I went home at that afternoon and asked my dad, hey dad, what is 9, September 11th and why is it so important to America? He said, September 11th is the day some dummy flew from to an airplane and hit the skyscraper in New York. And many people died. And this dummy, and this dummy happened to be from the Middle East. When I found that out, 
when I, when I found that out, I remember the time when I was in Ethiopia. Me and my brother and my uncle were celebrating the Ethiopian New Year. On the New Year, New Year and the New Year's we saw these two planes sitting in the building. My grandmother started speaking out and saying, my kids are in America, God help them. Protect them, protect these two kids. Then we got, to, we, got, we got a phone call from my parents saying, this was not near them. They were thousands of miles away from this bad place. Remembering all this bad, time, bad day for me and my grandmother, I realized it was the same event. I went to school the next day and told that I was about to, <clears throat> that, is, that happened to be Ethiopian years and I was in Ethiopia when, I, when this happened. I did not contribute to the 9-11. Even, even and I told him, I'm not the same race as the people that did that in New York. All of a sudden, Abi started treating me like an animal by sitting on me. He even threw my stuff away outside of the campus. He would hit me sometimes, punch me, and he would not hit me. I would not hit him back or fight back because I don't want him to get in trouble by my parents or by the school. Abi tries to be a badass, and he let his hate, hates and negativity attack me. A new kid from this house in good English. When I came to America, the land of free, freedom, I thought I would be so happy. I came from I came to America to be educated and to be a successful person. With that in my mind, I did not fight back. One day I was wearing skinny jeans, and since I was still new, my parents <coughs> my parents gave me a phone to to contact them when I needed them for an emergency. We were sitting in the classroom floor listening to the story that the teacher was saying, reading to us. Another Somali kid named Mohammed. Saw my pocket. My, po my phone made a square shape on my leg. My, on my leg by my, my skin. He saw how big it was. At lunchtime, he went to the office and told one of the students that the staff that I have, I have something in my pocket and that might hurt someone, that might hurt people. The staff member who happened to be the person who walked me to my classroom on my first day of school took my phone and she told me, she, she told me she wouldn't. <clears throat> Uh, she told me she would give it back to me later. I felt like I did not, I did something wrong. My rape popped up in anger and I was red in my face. I did not talk to anyone that whole day. After school, I went, <clears throat> after school I was leaving this day, I was leaving. The lady saw me and gave me the phone back and she told me never bring this to school again. Since I did not speak good English, <coughs> I did not talk to her or even tell her why I had the phone. One of the students who was Asian who happened to be Neil in class too, he had a phone but he never got his phone taken away. When I got my phone take, when I got my phone back after school I was happy and never realized I was, that I was confused. I had no idea what my <coughs> why my phone was taken away. On the last day of school Abi saw me and he saw me leaving and spilled the juice on my, my shoe and he, he said, See you next year. <laughs> but thankfully by, by this time my parents moved to another park, which is where I live now. And I love it here. I told him I'm moving to school, and right when I said that, his right hand, he, he got into his car, and since then, I've never seen him. Three days later, I ran into Mommy. I saw him a few blocks away from Central Elementary School. When I, saw, when I was walking to my, my mom's car to get my jacket for my mom and sister, it took me a few seconds to recognize him because he got taller and he had facial hair. I, walked him to, I wanted to punch him and make, make him bleed to death. This is weird. I've never felt like this. I wanted to tell someone before, but anyway, I walked into him and he said, Hey, what's up, man? 